In today's video, your goal is fat loss. You're trying to go from looking like this to looking like this, and you're in a thousand calorie deficit. How long can you sustain it? Hey guys, what's going on? This is Paul Ravella from ProPhysique.com, and today's video comes from right here on my Instagram direct message. Thank you guys for the great questions. My goal as a coach and educator is to help you. So hit subscribe if you enjoyed this type of content. And let's talk about today's question. Is there a max time frame you can be in a calorie deficit? I let myself get out of hand to 34% body fat and I'm trying to get down to 12. I've been in a deficit at 2000 calories daily for about 14 weeks so far and curious how long I need to take a diet break. How long of a diet break before I go back into a deficit? So this is a great question because all of us understand the idea of creating good habits to lose body fat involved eating less, being more active, okay? If you guys think that you need to do fasting, that you need to do the carnivore diet, that you need to do keto to lose weight, listen, all diets work on the same principle. They create a caloric deficit. Why does fasting work? Because you eat less. Why does keto work? Because you eat less. Why does carnivore work? Because you eat less. The ideas are that we feel satiated, that we feel full, and thus we create a deficit in our energy throughout the day. We are taking in more than we are burning throughout the day. Now those processes, although consuming is quite simple, what happens after we consume our calories is quite dynamic. And it's very important when you talk about creating a 1000 calorie deficit. That is a very aggressive approach. Now this gentleman or this person says they're down at 2000 calories a day and they've been there for a long time. So while this may have been a more aggressive diet early on, it actually may be less aggressive now because of weight loss. So actually losing weight, the process of losing weight means you need less calories to maintain your weight. So you are thus decreasing your energy deficit as you lose body fat. However, there's other ways to increase the deficit and that is through activity. So when we talk about a deficit, it's not simply about eating 1000 calories below maintenance. It could be eating 300 calories below maintenance and moving enough to burn another 700 calories throughout the day below what you were going to burn on your average for your daily energy expenditure. Anyway, so you can create a deficit through two methods, less energy in, more energy out. So when we create a 1000 calorie deficit, this can be great at the beginning. And this is something that I often hear, man, I did so good at the beginning, but this research paper right here explains the problem with low calorie dieting. There is a return on this fat loss, okay? Meaning, when you are aggressive with very low calorie dieting for long periods of time, the body is set up for rapid fat gain, for increased hunger, and for decreased energy expenditure. That's right. The problem with these diets of being a very aggressive approach, let's say, you know, a thousand calories. I just picked that number because it sounds aggressive. But the problem with this approach is that it's also associated with a few things, including muscle loss. If you're losing muscle during a fat loss phase, you are sincerely going to put yourself in a position where you're not only likely going to put the body fat back on, but once you do, you're going to have a suppressed metabolic rate and less lean body mass, meaning you look even worse, even at the same weight. So we need to control our calories. So how long can you be aggressive? This comes down to the individual. The more body fat you have at the beginning, the longer you can sustain this. The less body fat you have at the beginning, the less time you can sustain this. Now, as a coach, what I find with my athletes is that I'm able to kind of understand how much they can handle. I ask them about their hunger each week on their updates. I ask them about their stress. I ask them about a lot of things throughout this process. And if you guys would like some help, well, hey, we've got our transformation challenge kicking off, guys, in July. 90 days, $25,000, open worldwide. We're giving away the nutrition plans, the training plans, including vegan options, at-home options, and support in our private group to anyone who enters. The purpose of that is we wanna help you guys make the right decisions and your fat loss goals because it's not just about creating huge deficits. It's not just about exercising yourself to death. It's about putting yourself in a position to not only lose the weight, but help you keep it off. And that's what our transformation challenge is for. So when you're going through these processes of trying to lose body fat, what really is gonna ensure that you keep it off is the method in which you take. Now, sure, you can be aggressive at the early phases, right? You can say, I'm gonna be very aggressive with my calories and my cardio, but you need to start paying attention to some of the signs. What do I look for? Elevated hunger levels, increased food focus, right? Perhaps 
issues of overeating. Those are things that I look for before I put somebody on a break. Now, what is a break? This person asked me about a diet break and I got to say applause because to me, this is something that I kind of brought to the forefront of coaching many years ago and it was not received very well, not even with my clients. They're like, coach, I don't understand. You want me to get leaner, but you're giving me more food and less calorie cardio for the week. But lo and behold, it turns out, and we know this from the Matador study, and I've known it now from, from hundreds and hundreds of case studies of my clients, when we bring calories up slightly to maintenance and bring cardio down slightly, what happens is there's a profound impact on the metabolism, on the rest and recovery, the inflammation, the stress, the digestion, hormones are all benefited from taking these little recovery weeks. And if you're not familiar with the Matador study, I did a video on that many years ago. I'm sure it'll still come up if you search for it. But the idea there is that instead of just dieting down straight for a long time till we reach our goal weight, periodically, for me, I would say I don't take a diet break for the first six, eight, or 10 weeks of a diet until I see an athlete really kind of hit a sticking point. To me, that's, that's the indicator. If you've been dieting for a while, your calories have been low and your cardio is a little bit elevated and you realize you're not making the progress you want to make, you have a couple of weeks where you're stalled, let's bring the calories up and the cardio down for a week or two, seven to 14 days, and then get back to cutting and you're going to see a profound impact. Now, you have to be careful. This isn't a free-for-all. This isn't a break from dieting. This is a break from being in a deficit. So what I would say is for how long you've been in one, you're probably ready for one. And if you start to ask the question and you start to feel like you need a little break, that's a good indicator. All right, guys, so the big focus right now for you is to put yourself in a position to bring calories up, say 200 to 250, drop your cardio in half, and then after a week or two of that, go right back into your deficit. So how long can you sustain a thousand calorie deficit? Guys, it's gonna come down to the individual. Willpower is gonna play a role, but I would say don't push the envelope so that you put yourself in a worse position, okay? Don't be afraid of taking a week of recovery. It's gonna do great for you mentally, it's gonna do great for you physically, and it's gonna help you sustain the fat loss once you get there because you're gonna understand that getting body fat off is much, much harder than keeping it off. Guys, I haven't even gained any weight since I ended my bodybuilding diet. I'm still the same, why? Because I understand how to bring my food up and not just go crazy with no cardio and lots of extra calories. All right guys, I'm gonna to talk to you tomorrow.